born of ice and frost. Shine down! You're still here. If Paimon woke up alone, she probably would be trembling in a tree hollow. Let's follow this path for now. We might be able to meet someone and figure out what this place is all about. Look 
weird to you? It almost looked like they were made of paper. Uh, and those two frogs over there? Yeah, they look like pieces of origami. Oh, by the shade of a lotus leaf stream, don't tell me you forgot how to jump. I, I didn't forget, Firecracker. I'm just not sure if what I remember is correct. <laughs> Next thing you know, you'll have forgotten how to sing, much less notate a score. You still remember why we call you Stream, don't you? Yeah, because I've got a great singing voice. Although these days, the name seems more ironic than anything. Not just a great voice, one that evokes the gentleness of early morning dewdrops flowing into a spring. So cheer up and make the jump over. If you're still unsure, just use that roll of magic thread. I won't laugh, I promise. Now don't tell me you've forgotten how to use that as well. I haven't forgotten everything, Firecracker. Your name, for instance. It's kind of hard to forget that you're named after your fiery temper. Now do me a favor and pipe down for a second. I'll be right over. <laughs> you saw that too, right? Paimon's not seeing things, is she? <laughs> this place is getting more confusing by the second. Anyway, uh... Why don't we go after those two frogs? They didn't look evil or anything. Plus, they might be be able to help us out? <laughs> Let's roll! <laughs> May I present? Let's blow bubbles! Attaboy! Catch me! <laughs> Let's 
Let's roll! Hey, get him! Huh? Let's see! Catch me! Guess we're not catching up to those frogs. They were so fast. Paimon couldn't even tell where they hopped off to in the end. Uh, excuse me, honored travelers. Did you come from the Cliff of Prophecy, perchance? <laughs> the, the chubby paper hamster just talked! Chubby? Who are you calling chubby? Just got a slightly thicker layer of paper on me, that's all. <clears throat> uh, allow me to uh, introduce myself. Uh, my name is Armand, and I'm an elder of the Forest of Blessings. Uh, I've been waiting here for the Hero of Prophecy to arrive. <laughs> Traveler, could you pinch Paimon just to make sure she's not still dreaming? Uh, pinching, you say? Well, I can help with that. Although you'll have to get a little closer, my... Arms are rather short. Uh, that's all right. We just need a minute to collect ourselves. Okay, let's think things through. <laughs> we know for sure this isn't the world we're familiar with. The talking paper animals and all the paper trees and plants make that pretty clear. The hero from another world, supported by their companions, shall restore peace to the world. That is what the prophecy says. <laughs> Deary me, <laughs> I, I completely forgot to introduce you to this world, didn't I? <sighs> and here I am, getting all excited by the arrival of the hero. <laughs> You'll have to excuse me, this old brain isn't what it once was. All shell and no nut. <sighs> no, uh, perhaps my once glossy paper has faded past the point of no return. It's okay, really. You can just tell us all about this world now. Ah, let me think. Hmm, where, where should I even begin? Pretty much forgotten everything that happened in the past. Uh, right. I, I believe the story circulating along the pulp of this forest goes as follows. A long, long time ago, three goddesses created this world and named it Simulanka. The goddess of creation, who presides over matter and magic, created the mountains and rivers and gave us life. Her powers also paved the way for Simulanka to exist in numerous worlds. After the goddess of creation came the goddess of prophecy, with dominion over the stars and the course of fate itself. She induced the sky to spin and the earth to move. Even to this day, her, her statue still stands tall at the highest point of constellation Metropole. The final goddess was the goddess of fate. She who reigns over all treasured tales and dearest wishes. She bestowed upon us the fierce and everlasting feelings of love and hate, and showed us the meaning of death and hope. Wow, they all seem super impressive. Sounds like they really did a lot. Uh, of course. The all new residents of Simulanka come to the forest to thank the goddess of creation for founding this world, and travel to Constellation Metropole to witness the divinations of the goddess of prophecy's numerous oracles. After that, they make their way to the end of the world and tell the goddess of fate about their most cherished dreams. 
<sighs> well, at least that's how it used to be. Uh, how it used to be? Did something bad happen? Oh, yeah. That has to do with the hero you're waiting for, right? Yes, yes this old, old brain of mine may have forgotten many things, but I will never forget the day the evil dragon descended upon our forest. It came down from the skies in an ominous black mist and ravaged our homeland. Its gigantic footprints can still be seen in the kingdom of breezes and bells. We're incredibly fortunate that no one was hurt. Sounds terrifying! The terror doesn't stop there, I'm afraid. Ever since the attack, the calligraphy tavern in the forest has been closed. No one knows why, but it's a catastrophe of the highest order for us, forest dwellers. Uh, a catastrophe of the highest order? All because a tavern closed? If we were talking about Mondstadt here, Paimon might understand, but is it really all that serious? Good. Goddess of creation above. We'd take even the greatest flood over the closure of the tavern. Wet paper will dry out with time. Fallen trees can be restored. But the calligraphy tavern is the only source of the magic tonic that sustains all creatures in the forest. M magic what? Magic tonic. It was gifted to the forest by the goddess of creation herself. A, a special potion that helps us maintain our vitality. Well, our bodies will gradually crumple and become brittle until they eventually disintegrate entirely. Our colors will fade and we'll start to lose our memory until we can't even remember our own names. Uh, but wait, Grandpa Almond, does that mean you've already... Oh, I'm afraid so. The color has all but completely faded from my paper. To be honest, all I really remember is that I'm supposed to wait here for the Hero of Prophecy. But I've already forgotten who gave me that order to begin with. Then we've got to act fast! How can we help? Oh, brave Pixie. May the Goddess of Fate reward you and your friend for your kindness. Could it be your the heroes I've been waiting for all along? Um, not sure how we know that. Plus, we can't even remember how we got here, so it's not looking too promising. Well, uh, this is turning out to be quite the conundrum for old Armand Brain here. <laughs> Prophecy never mentioned anything like that. Uh, for now, why don't you come with me to the Hut of Blessings? Our forest fairy lives there. Maybe she'll know what to do. Whoa, a forest fairy? Like one that knows magic? Oh, you betcha. <laughs> She's prophesized to join the hero on their journey. Well then, she sounds like exactly the kind of person we need. Please lead the way, Grandpa Almond. Pretty strange. Uh, that's what the calligraphy tavern looks like. Now it's lost all of its color. Hey! <laughs> May I present? Let's see! Let's roll! Ha <laughs> ha! Bam! 
I'm on a roll. Don't smile too much, or your face will get tired. 
Catch me! Let's roll! This is the place. If you could just wait a moment, the fairy should be. Traveler! Paimon! <gasps> Paimon knows that voice! It's really you! I'm so happy to see you! Uh, uh, sorry. Sorry. So Nilu is the forest fairy? Well, you certainly look the part. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, to be honest, I'm still getting used to it. It's the weirdest thing. I remember I was reading a book at the Grand Bazaar, and then I guess I must have fallen asleep at some point because... Well, then I woke up dressed like this. And, in my dream, someone spoke to me. They said, You are the fairy of the Forest of Blessings. Now go, save the forest with your magic. At first, I thought this whole world was just part of the dream. But no matter how hard I tried, I couldn't seem to wake up. I couldn't find anyone I knew from the real world either. Sounds similar to what happened with us. We also have no idea how we got here. Anyway, sorry for my reaction back there. I got a bit too excited when I saw you two. It's okay, we totally understand. We were looking for a way out too. At least we know we're not alone. Oh, blessed be the goddess of fate above. You're already friends with the fairy of the forest. Grandpa Almond, thank you so much for bringing my friends here. Could you let the others know I'm coming? I'll head over right away. Uh, of course. Leave it to me. Hey-ho, pistachio. <laughs> Today truly is a blessed day. Wow, Nilu. Looks like you made short work of getting to know the locals. Well, when I arrived here yesterday, Grandpa Ullman told me all about the state of this world. Since they think of me as their forest fairy, I just felt like I had to try to help them. Oh, so you mean like using some kind of forest magic to repair the tavern? Unfortunately, I don't know how to use the magic of this world. I've tried using my vision, but it doesn't seem to work here. If the books stored in this hut are anything to go by, this seems to be the place where the goddess of creation first made the townspeople of this forest. She folded the pages of books into small origami animals, gave them life with her magic, and with time, that's how the Forest of Blessings took shape. Hmm. Maybe one of the books here could teach us how to use magic. I read them all, but only found one reference to magic. The incantation, Abracadabra, means to create what I say. This is a world made up of words, where fantastical powers can be wielded by all. Okay, so basically everyone in this world can use magic? That's nice, 
but still kind of vague. Yeah, from the other books I read, it seems like this goddess really likes to play fast and loose with the details. So, what should we do now? Um, didn't you say you were going somewhere, Nilu? Oh, yes. I was going to help some of the other residents of the forest. They've been busy making preparations to reopen the tavern, so I thought I could help out. Got it! Guess we should just focus on what we can do for now. This whole thing is making me pretty nervous, actually. It's like I've been pushed on stage without being taught the choreography. Since I'm already wearing the costume, though, I might as well try to play the part. It's what a professional dancer would do. And who knows? Maybe I'll find my own magic along the way. All I can do is try, right? At least you're optimistic! Thank you! Then let's go! Best flavor in the world? The sweet, sweet taste of victory. And that's why I've never spent a single more. Go, go! The show begins! Look, the forest fairy is here, and she brought her companions. Grandpa Almond was right, they do look promising. Hello there, everyone. I heard you were working on the piping for the calligraphy tavern. Is there anything we can do to help? Oh, we wouldn't dream of troubling you with our petty problems, my lady. Don't you worry, we have it all under control. Ah, uh, you sure about that? Because from where Paimon's floating, the piping is looking pretty chaotic. Ah, uh, yes. We have my careless friend to thank for that. He promised we could leave the pipe connecting to him, and... Well, the results speak for themselves. Uh, hey, I just wanted to inspect each pipe. This is the network the Magic Tonic has to flow through. I was just trying to be thorough, so I... Uh, I disassembled the whole thing. Yeah, and now you've forgotten how to put the thing back together. <sighs> Have you been eating too many nuts again? Because you are what you eat. Please don't fight. I know everyone wants the tavern to reopen as soon as possible so that the forest can return to normal. So, why don't you let us help out? Yeah, we're here anyway, so we might as well be helpful. We just need to reassemble these pipes, right? Well, if you're offering... Basically, the pipes need to be connected properly to allow the magic tonic to flow through. If you put the wrong pipe in the wrong place, the tonic will get stuck halfway. Attention to detail is key. Says the guy who messed up the whole thing in the first place. Let's roll! Get him! Go, go, Baron Bunny! Calm down! <laughs> How brilliant! <laughs> Bam! Ha! 
Something doesn't seem quite right. The tonic is stuck.
Let's roll! Go, go, Baron Buddy!
Let's roll! Hey, go, go, Ferret Bunny! <laughs> How brilliant! Attaboy! Catch me! Let's roll! is starting to get pretty curious about this magic tonic. Um, could she have a teeny tiny sip? Just a little taste, please? It's not greed, it's curiosity. Well, if it's really just one sip, I guess that would be fine. Just be careful. This is one of the last cups left in the entire forest. We're supposed to save it for our research. Just a sip. Legend says is true? The goddess of fate used ink to compose her stories on paper, and the goddess of creation used her power to bring those tales to life. No wonder the tavern is so important to the forest. Maybe the fading disorder occurs when the ink within the body dries up. That would explain why the beings here are forgetting their own stories. Oh. I'm not really sure I can really wrap my head around this conversation, but there's no need to get all worked up on our behalf, my lady. With the pipe installed, I'm sure the tavern will be up and running in no time. Uh, what do you mean, can't wrap your head around it? The fairy is recounting the story of how the goddesses gave us life. In fact, I've seen the goddess of creation with my own eyes. Really? Don't be ridiculous. There's no way you're old enough to have met her. We're the same age, and I think I would know considering we went to tell our wishes to the goddess of fate together. So stop talking a load of paper mache. Oh, fine. It was my grandfather, all right? He was the one that saw her. He said that one day after he finished work, he saw the goddess of creation grant us life with his own eyes. In her hands, she held the very paper used to form our bodies. She whispered something into the pages, and then suddenly a paper frog was born, ready to leap into the world. Oh, it was spectacular. Ah, uh, cut the theatrics, will you? You weren't even there. Wait, so that's it? Paimon thought creation magic would have a little bit more pizzazz. Oh. So, in your world, the creation of life is a much showier affair? Huh. I'm learning something new every day. Um, w well, that's not exactly what Paimon was trying to say. Magic doesn't have to be spectacular. That's enough out of you. 
All your boasting is confusing our kind fairy. Oh, no, it's all right. I actually think I understand the magic of this world a bit better now. Thank you. The honor was all ours, my lady. Traveler, Paimon, we should make our way to the next location. Can't catch me! Goodbye, working for a living. Let's roll! 